I'm Tim Herrera with the Sacramento County Office of Education here with another Teacher of the Year profile. Right now we're speaking with Carrie Maharellis, who is one of two Teachers of the Year for the Sacramento City Unified School District. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Tim. So you are a kindergarten teacher at Phoebe Hurst Elementary. I am. And how long have you been a teacher? This will be my 19th year coming up this oh. year. At yes. the same school? No, I've, I've taught um, in Sacramento at Washington Elementary School and at Edward Kemble Elementary School where I was a training specialist and a first grade teacher. And then I've been at Phoebe Hurst now for four years. So as a training specialist, is that the same thing as a mentor teacher? Uh, no, I was a uh, training specialist for language arts. So I helped in, uh, the teachers implement our language arts program and helped them with planning and lesson implementation. It's quite a responsibility. It was, it was, but I learned so much um, through SCOE actually, from, um, from our support from SCOE and from being able to watch other teachers as they teach. And you know, you learn so much just from being in other people's classrooms mm -hmm. and planning together. That was pretty much my whole job. I planned with people and then we taught lessons together or uh, I taught I taught a lesson and then we we met afterwards or the t other teacher taught a lesson and we met afterwards to discuss how it went and next steps. Mm. Yeah. A lot of people don't realize a lot of planning goes into using a curriculum. Definitely, it does. Lot, there's testing, pre-testing, post-testing and you really have to figure out what works and what doesn't. Yes, yes, so much planning and it doesn't get any easier each year <laughs> yeah. you know, because the kids change and therefore your lessons need to change. So so as a kindergarten teacher, that's, that's for a lot of students, that's their first real introduction to school because a lot of them don't go to preschool. Right. Um, what's it like teaching that foundational building block type of class? What are, what are some of the things that you really need to do as a kindergarten teacher? Well, I love teaching kindergarten. It's my favorite grade. Um, I, I, I tell parents every year that my goal is by the end of the year, I want their child to love school. The reading and the math and the writing, that comes with the love of school. I, um, we work so hard every day to uh, make sure that the foundation is there and that they're either reading by the end of the year or ready to read when they start first grade. And I also just make sure that they are hungry for more and don't want summer vacation. <laughs> they, want, they just wanna stay in school because they love it so much. What do you think is the biggest adjustment for a child going into kindergarten? They miss their parents, definitely. A long day for some of them. It's hard to be away from their families or their brothers and sisters or a babysitter or whoever they're with during the day. They miss that uh, and they're exhausted by the end of the day. So that is a tough transition, especially at the beginning of the year for them to uh, transition into that school day and um, just meeting all new friends and mm -hmm. getting along on the playground and learning the rules of school and learning classroom procedures and how to take turns and uh, how to work hard every day and be respectful and kind to citizens as well. One of the biggest duties of a kindergarten teacher is to prepare that child for first grade. Yes. First grade is a big jump. It is. Explain some of the things that you really have to do to prepare the uh, the five-year-old to be a six-year-old in first grade? Well, first grade teachers always say that, you know, if they're, if they're not reading by the end of first grade, then there's a, there's, there could be trouble mm -hmm. later on, there usually is. So my goal is always to make sure that if they're not reading by the end of kindergarten, that they're right there and they're, they'll be ready by, by September of first grade, ready to take off with their reading. It's, uh, it's not an easy thing to do, but with a lot of hard work and uh, you know, making sure that I uh, stay in constant contact with families about a child's progress, we are always able to get the kids where they need to be. And you really have to kind of gauge the process of each child differently because everybody learns differently. This, right. And not everybody's at the same pace. So how do you do that with someone who's such a young learner where you may not have the same type of uh, data that you would for an older student to see test scores and things like that? What are some of the things you look for? Well, I test, most of the testing I do is one-on-one -on -one orally with kids, you know, letter names, letter sounds, um, just talking to them and having them explain 
what happens in a story, what happened in a story first and in the middle and last, and how do you how do you think this character feels? What makes you think that this character feels that way? Are they able to articulate their comprehension? And um, be just all of that goes into figuring out, okay, where is this child and what is the next step? Where is the next step I need to take them? So you've been teaching for 19 years, right? Yes. So what are some of the big changes you've seen in the amount of time that you've been a teacher? The big changes I've seen, well, kindergarten is definitely very academic these days. Kids are expected to do a lot and they're definitely capable of it. Sometimes they don't even realize that they're working so hard because they're having such a good time doing it. We're very hands-on. I make sure that uh, that you know the lessons are engaging because there is so much that they need to learn to do by the end of kindergarten. That's definitely the biggest change I've seen in my And now with, with Common Core, yes. you, you can really kind of gauge where a child should be at a certain time and what they should know. Yes, yes. And I, I, I appreciate the Common Core standards because, the, def, like you said, I'm, I'm definitely able to know where the kids should be and when, and I'm able to show parents exactly where their child needs to be by the end of the school year. So what inspired you to become a teacher in the first place? Well, teaching kind of runs in my family. Uh, my grandmother on my dad's side was a teacher. My mom is a retired uh, teacher in Sacramento. And I was just visiting with family, and I think I have seven cousins who are who are teachers as well, <laughs> elementary teachers as well. So it just really runs in my family. Visiting my mom's class uh, growing up really um, helped me to know that that's what I wanted to do after I finished college. She taught in Sacramento, so I was able to go to her classroom quite a bit when I was in high school and just help out and observe and, and uh, get to know the kids and see so it just seemed kind of natural for you. It did, yeah. yes, yes. So what does it mean to you to be a Teacher of the Year representing you know, all the good teachers in Sacramento City Unified? It's such an honor. I, I mean, I feel like there are so many <laughs> teachers who work so hard in our district and all over, at districts all over. Uh, I feel like I don't deserve it. I feel like I have so many colleagues who do. Um, it's definitely humbling and, um, like I said, such an honor. So if you were talking to someone who was considering becoming a teacher, uh, what are some of the things that you would tell them as kind of, what's your sales pitch basically? What's your sales pitch to someone? Well, I would tell them it's the best job in the world. <laughs> um, I don't think there's a better job. I think that uh, it's, I, you know, you have to be honest with people though when they're trying to choose a profession and tell them it's not easy, just like any job. It's not, it's not always easy, but the rewards are huge. And um, if you love kids, there isn't anything better. There's no better way to spend your days than with these people who are learning so much every day and uh, just trying so hard. And they love to be with you and work, work, work. And I'm sure the first couple of years for you were uh, um, a little challenging, kind of getting used to it and, and they were. understanding they were. what it was like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And like I said earlier, you know, it it doesn't, it gets easier because you have all of your experience to draw on, but it doesn't necessarily um, uh, get too much easier because because you every year you're faced with a new set of challenges and um, things to overcome and work through. So, Well, and here you are now as, as one of the two teachers of the year for the Sacramento City Unified School District. We appreciate uh, speaking with you. We've been speaking with uh, Carrie Maharellis from Sacramento City Unified, Phoebe Hurst Elementary. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.